From STEM to STEAM, a new trend in education has schools adding art to the science, technology, engineering, and math curriculum. For the next few minutes, we'll talk about efforts to promote STEAM education for African American students. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Robert Trainum, and joining me is David Johns. He's the executive director of the White House Initiative on Educational Excellence for African Americans. David, welcome to the program. Thank you for having it's me. It's always Robert. good to see you. Good to see you. As so well. I, I think more and more Americans um, are comfortable and understand STEM science, technology, engineering, and math, as I mentioned a few moments ago. I think a lot of students are afraid of it. I, I know as a student, <laughs> um, way back when in the Stone Ages, I didn't particularly like math and engineering. Um, and so it was one of those topics where I, I tend to kind of just skate my way through. But what we're learning, and you know this, David, better than anybody else, is that you need these skills in order to compete uh, in the workforce. But I think it's also known that brown individuals, whether it be Latinos or African Americans and so forth, really have not gravitated towards STEM. Yeah. Any reason why? So I'm going to push back a little bit and, and because, you know, there's power and precision. And of I would course. say that it's not that we're not gravitating towards and excelling in mm -hmm. STEM fields. It's mm -hmm. that we're often told, especially in school, that we're, we're not supposed to be in those spaces. And the older Good point. we become and the more we matriculate through um, spaces in which we're either learning about or supposed to be demonstrating the proficiency in those skills, the, the fewer the opportunities there are to see people who look like us. Understood. Um, and that often has a toll on why does it people choose to stay in a STEM profession or leave. So let's talk about STEAM. As yep. I mentioned, art now is this new uh, initiative of, to put art in the curriculum. Walk us through what the thinking is behind this. Yes, yeah, so I think there are two things that have been really important as we do this work through the White House Initiative on Educational Excellence for African Americans. And it's just acknowledging often when you ask a child, particularly a black child, what they want to be when they grow up, aside from the traditional doctor, lawyer, sometimes they're babies who celebrate that educators do God's work and they say teachers uh, infrequently, uh, but most say they want to be an entertainer or an athlete, right? And uh, in, in some ways the arts are sort of celebrated and so what we do is highlight the way that the arts are embedded in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, right? Think about a piano and the distance between of a keystroke and the, the way that it strikes and, the, and the, how it, it reverberates, right? It, it's all embedded and sure. so for us it's highlighting that students never stop a teacher and say, wait, is it science or technology? It right? They matter. really, it doesn't matter. It's, it should right? be intertwined, and they just need to be engaged in ways that are rigorous, rigorous and relevant. So, you know, David, is this a conversation that we need to be having at the parental level, at the teacher level, at the student level, or all of the above? D, all of the above, most definitely, right? So, to your point about, and I, I should have asked you the question, why you weren't good at science and math, and I think in part it would be because someone told you right. that it wasn't for you. Right? Well, it was the stigma. You know, science is really hard, or right. you know, or I don't like math either. So it was like a double double entendre, if you will, when it, when it had a double meaning. So if, so if you didn't like it, I'm, I'm sure I'm not going to like it as well. Yeah, but we're also the descendants of people who, who exceed challenges at of times course. in which we're told we're not supposed to be of able course. to do something, right? And so one thing that we do is try and reframe how it is that we traditionally have these conversations. Often when you say to a young child, do you know a STEM professional, they might draw a blank, right? This happened for me when we hosted a summit in Atlanta, Georgia, and it was because they were thinking of a white man in a lab coat sitting on a bench, right? Mm -hmm. Looking at uh, bleak beakers or, or messing with chemicals. Um, if we push them to think differently, we highlight and celebrate that there are kids like like a little girl named Michaela, the youngest person ever to be carried in Whole Foods because she makes a lemonade using her grandmother's flaxseed oil recipe, right? Our, our Corey Nevis, who has a cookie business in New York City, he's 12 years of age, and when he talks about his cookies, he says they're all natural and they're made with love, And right? that's a gift. That, that's an art form. That is a gift that should be celebrated, correct? And most definitely, and the reality is that there are kids who are leveraging science, technology, engineering, the arts and mathematics in some incredible ways in their homes and in their communities, and the opportunity is to bring that into the school to find ways to embed that in, into the curriculum. David, we got about 20 seconds left. I wish we had more time for the parent at home, uh, to the loved one at home, to the teacher at home. How can they get more information about STEAM? Um, I think that, one, you should visit our website, uh, uh, ed.gov slash AFAM Education, and follow us on Twitter. We host um, AFAM Ed Chat, where we highlight a lot of these All opportunities. All right, David, thank you very much for joining us, and thank you for joining us for this edition of Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Robert Trainum. Have a great day. Bye-bye.